Electricity access is important, but reliable electricity access is even more important. You may have had an experience in life where you experienced a power outage. I know it was a major inconvenience and you might have found yourself with all the food in your refrigerator spoiling, your freezer thawing out, you having to use your cell phone flashlight and also no running water. So how do you drink water? You've got to conserve it. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering. And on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. Now let's zoom out from that individual micro perspective to that of a macro perspective. How can unreliable electricity access impact the already impoverished and already the people that are struggling and trying to take themselves out of poverty? Now, you know, say for example, a power outage happens in a community where a local factory is operating. And now this local factory is of course dependent on reliable electricity access. How does this impact the community? Now let's start with the domino impact, starting from the, the entire supply chain. So from the raw materials, okay, that are being produced by a vendor in another factory, they take a loss, okay, because now they don't have as many frequent orders from that factory. Number two, the underpaid workers, okay? The underpaid workers in the factory have to be sent home early. They're having a loss in revenue. They don't have the already the luxury to feed their kids, have a good quality health and quality education for their entire household. And now they're having to go home early, okay? Now, next is factory owners. The factory owners are being impacted. They may have thin margins where they're operating from. Now, this can have a neglect in factory maintenance and upgrades and also the upkeep of the factory for it to grow. And this in, a, in turn may impact the safety systems in that factory. So next is the stores and suppliers that are purchasing the end product from the factory. So now the suppliers, they don't have anything to sell. Okay, or they don't have as much reliable supply to sell. So they are impacted. So as you can see, negative impact from every aspect of that supply chain, every aspect of, of that factory, from the raw product to the factory workers, to the factory owners, to the people selling the product in the stores. And at the end, you see the end product will go for a lot more expensive. So the people actually purchasing, you know, the middle class are gonna be impacted as well. So as you can see now, unreliable electricity has a chain reaction impact. Okay, it impacts all parts of society. And this is just a small example. Now imagine this happens again and again. You're seeing power outage after power outage after power outage. And this is a regular occurrence for many developing nations across the world. Very essential areas in society, they cease to function. Okay, like schools, hospitals, and small businesses. What people tend to do, the middle class or the higher upper middle class, is they tend to install diesel generators in their homes. Okay, independent of that of the grid. And what this has an impact for is they may just become dependent on those diesel generators whenever there's a power outage. This creates a crazy amount of emissions and cost for the people in, in that city. So now you know why it's so important for nations across the world to have grid stability, okay? And this leads me to the next topic. How do grids across the world achieve that stability? Well, it's two words, baseload power. Now, baseload energy or baseload power is the minimum amount of electricity that needs to be supplied to an electrical grid at any given time. Okay, this is why when you grab a snack from your fridge at 3 a.m. in the morning, when not many people are awake, the lights work and also your refrigerator is running. All right, so baseload is very important. Now, baseload electricity sources generate power 24 seven, okay? Now, most of these baseload sources in the world right now at the moment are coming from fossil fuel emissions, okay? So that release a lot of greenhouse gases. That's why energy and electricity production across the world is such a massive problem. It's because we as societies need to maintain our baseload grids. Now, the only alternative to that of coal and natural gas power production is that of nuclear power, okay? Nuclear power is able to maintain baseload energy source. And the reason why is because it's running 24 seven. Now, the difference between nuclear power and that of coal and fossil fuels, like coal and natural gas, is that nuclear energy is zero greenhouse gas emissions. Whereas fossil fuels, of course, produce greenhouse gases, which can cause climate change, human health effects, and ultimately can lead to disastrous long-term consequences. This is why nuclear technologies and nuclear reactor technologies need to be deployed to maintain that baseload power, produce reliable electricity, which can allow
allow economies to prosper and ultimately drag people out of poverty. So as you can see, that chain reaction, that domino effect from a stable electricity resource that's also environmentally friendly to having that end impact at a micro level of that of people on the ground coming out of impoverished conditions. So this is a call to action for developing nations across the world and already developed nations to really build a strong foundation of baseload energy in their nations with that of nuclear power. Next, adding renewable resources like solar and wind, which are great intermittent sources of electricity supply, which can also be integrated into this grid infrastructure. So the real question is, why can't we run our grids completely on renewable energy resources like wind and solar and ultimately maintain baseload energy? The core issue and main reason why is because we don't control the input of energy. We don't control the wind. It flows naturally. Sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow. And when there's no wind, there's no power being generated. Similarly with solar, we are fully dependent on the sun. And when it's nighttime outside, we obviously can't generate electricity. But also our power output is dependent on factors totally out of human control. Things like cloudy weather can severely limit our power generation. Hydropower, on the other hand, is more stable and reliable than solar and wind. However, when it comes to hydro, you're still dependent on factors like rainfall and also geography of the location. You need very precise requirements in order to put up a dam in a location. You simply can't put a dam up just anywhere. Geothermal energy has the same issue of that of hydropower. Geothermal is limited to that of location and not every location on the earth can harness the power of geothermal. Geothermal heat needs to be close enough to the surface of the earth in order for us to harness it. What's great about nuclear power plants is that they have full control over the input of energy, which means that you can increase and decrease electricity generation based on demand. However, what's important to note is that all weather dependent energy sources like solar and wind have to have backup power plants in order to maintain baseload energy. And these power plants are either natural gas or coal, which are fossil fuels that emit a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. So when the wind slows down or the sun is covered by the clouds or dams are simply low on water inventory, these backup power supplies kick in immediately and provide the difference between supply and demand of electricity. This is why renewable energy resources aren't necessarily a direct threat to that of the fossil fuel industry. However, when it comes to nuclear energy, nuclear power plants are a direct threat to that of fossil fuel power generation. And the reason why is because they're able to maintain baseload power without depending on any fossil fuel energy sources. Take California for example. The state is aggressively pushing toward adopting more renewable energy resources. And in fact, last May, California was able to run the entire state on 100% renewable energy resources. But the key word here is briefly. If we look at the data published by California's Energy Commission in the year 2021, we noticed a very interesting observation. It's the fact that natural gas accounts for 50% of the state's electricity generation. However, when it comes to renewable energy, Energy sources like wind only makes up 15% and solar is only 7% and that's in a state which has an abundance of sunshine. So in reality, California is heavily dependent on fossil fuels in order to meet the electricity demands of this large state. So these numbers, they don't look very green. This leads to a very simple conclusion. Nuclear energy needs to play a very important role in our clean energy future. There's simply no way around it. Burning fossil fuels to meet the demands that wind and solar simply can't fulfill, then we are headed for the same climate disaster that we were heading toward decades ago. We also simply can't wait for the development of battery technologies so that solar and wind can be harnessed during times of high supply and then electricity can be redistributed during high demand. We need pragmatic solutions and we need to take action now. And that action is nuclear. With climate change impacting our world at the moment and many challenges in the horizon, I want to really highlight some of these challenges for you. It's even more reason why we need electricity resources like nuclear, which are zero emissions, cheap and can be scaled up. So let's talk about the predicted impact of climate change that will come in the future. It's estimated to have equaled that of having a COVID-19 size pandemic every 10 years. Now imagine every 10 years you have economic impact equivalent to that of COVID-19. Yes, that is 
mind boggling. Add challenges to that, like food affordability, okay, because the cost of food will increase uh, because a lot of these regions are being impacted by climate change and crops, of course, grow outdoors. And a lot of these poor communities, most people spend an average of half their income on their food. Uh, so this may allow food prices to increase by around 25%, which makes it unaffordable for people already in impoverished conditions, which are struggling to feed themselves day by day. Overall, as humanity, we are going to face many challenges in the horizons. And as a species, we need to use every technology available in our tool belt. And we need to use proven technologies like nuclear power generation to really have a positive impact, not only for our climate, but also for advancing humanity. We need pragmatic and practical solutions. We need to improve the lives of people, mitigate emissions, and ultimately eliminate poverty as we know it. So these are very big and hairy, audacious goals. However, I think they can be achieved. We need to take them and look at them one step at a time. So really had a great time with this video, uh, doing the research and putting this together. Hope you get the chance to check out some of my other videos related to how nuclear power technologies operate. You can check them out right here. Hope you enjoy. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.